WRCR, good morning. Good morning. It's Tina Traster. From the Rockland County Business Journal, and how are you hanging this morning? I'm hanging pretty well. How is everybody out there in Rockland County land? Uh, we didn't ask. We didn't take a survey this morning, but I think they're all right. All right, that's good. I mean, uh, we've had a lot of uh, hot, sunny weather, which uh, makes it challenging for people to get out there and enjoy the, the, the weather, but at the same time, social distance. I went up to a state park yesterday hoping to have a swim in a lake and um, in New Jersey, and uh, I think I got there at, at 11, and, and, the, and it was all full. I had to turn around and do something else. So um, it's tough out there. It's tough out there. Speaking of which, um, one of the industries that's definitely, you know, still challenged are bars and restaurants. And, um, you know, we know that uh, <clears throat> Cuomo um, has really been cracking down on, um, on, on bars and restaurants uh, with, you know, that, that are violating um, the social distancing uh, mandates and, and the mask wearing, what have you. Um, this week, the, uh, the, the State Liquors Authority Board will um, review 105 violations. Uh, and this is, this is largely, I, I think, in, in New York City and Long Island. Um, what we, um, the story that I'm going to talk about is, um, you know, one of, one of the most, one of the hottest industries prior to the pandemic and one that we saw really um, flourishing here in this county are um, breweries and brew pubs. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, it, it, it became a, a, a popular concept for, um, you know, art, an artisanal uh, product and for social gathering and, um, you know, the, real, the spirit of, of the day, you know, the things that are sm smaller batches and uh, um, th th this sort of thing. So... Um, what uh, many, many brew pubs, um, when the pandemic hit, including the one that we featured um, just last week, which is <clears throat> Two Villains Brewery uh, in Nyack, um, at first, well, first of all, many of them were allowed to remain open. They seemed to get uh, under the wire of, of being an essential business, and so... Many, at least, were able to keep the doors open. I guess, I guess a lot of them also sold, uh, you know, food, and so, so they had a fighting chance to, to stay open. Um, at first, what we saw, uh, not just here in, in the county, what we saw nationally is the breweries uh, turn their attention to, um, to selling groceries or, like, little bodegas. And so they would, they, you know, you'd see in their windows, as you did with Two Villains, uh, Two Villains Brewery, you'd see signs for um, eggs and milk and, and toilet paper and hand sanitizer and, and chicken. I mean, I think that what it was is that these places had access, um, you know, through their own wholesaling uh, to order these, these products. And, um, you know, they figured a sort of a store within a store concept. Um, and because, you know, the pandemic has, what it's, what it's drawn out in, in, in all of us is, is how to do things differently, you know, either, either pivot or perish. So at first, Two Villains Brewing uh, tried that, um, you know, just to take one step back. So, so here, here was a brewery that took over a year or so to renovate an existing space. And I don't, I don't know if you guys have been in there, but um, it, it's, it's a brewery, it, and it's got all of those, um, you know, the vats and all of that machinery. So it was, it was a long, a uh, year-long uh, renovation for this brewery on Main Street in Nyack, and they really only opened in, <clears throat> for, for real, in about January and they just started to gain some traction. Okay, so then that so then the pandemic hits, and uh, you know they're not established enough uh, yet, and so they they attempt this this little grocery or bodega style <clears throat> store within a store pop up, and uh, that that doesn't really go so well. And at the time, neither were the sales of the crawlers because um, as uh, Mike. 
uh, Solicito, the one of the co-owners, said, you know, people weren't really that interested in swinging by and picking up a 32-ounce crowler, which uh, is like the equivalent of 2.5 beers. Um, they, you know, they wanted something a single serving size. So, um, sometime, you know, by by early June. So now they were about three months into the pandemic. Um, two villains really saw their revenues plummet by 75 percent, and they're watching, you know, all of their, um, you know, good intentions sliding down the drain. And so they. Um, quickly, um, you know, reconfigured and recalibrated, and they took their beer, uh, and they went to a uh, canning operation in New Jersey, and they figured out that um, what they needed to do real quickly was to uh, can, um, label, and repackage uh, in four packs uh, their home-brewed beer to give them a fighting chance. And, um, and so that, that's, that's exactly what they did. They, they, they ramped up, um, you know, an aspect of their business that, um, well, th that did not pre-exist. Uh, they figured that people would be much more likely to swing by and get a four-pack and bring that home and, I guess, put it in the fridge and either, you know, I mean, again, we're not entertaining at this time, so we don't have people over. So, you know, if it's, it's you and your wife or something like that, you know, maybe you've got four cans and that's two for two different dinners or, or an afternoon. And even though, you know, the, the price point on, on the four-pack uh, was lower, a lower profit margin than, um, you know, the on tap. Uh, or the crowlers, what they recognized is that it, it came down to um, volume and, and moving the product and, and, and staying relevant. And, you know, these are the challenges that business or businesses are having. And so the interesting thing is, is that now here we are almost uh, in August, and what the owners say are canning, uh, the canned beers are now 25% of their business, um, they say that this is the revenue stream that's saving us, uh, quote. And um, they, um, you know, what they, what it, the interesting thing is, is they said that, that all along, you know, they figured at some point, you know, down the road, uh, they would look at canning and distribution to supermarkets or restaurants, but, but that was not what their intention was out the gate you know, when, when, when they set up their business model. And, um, you know, what, what, the, uh, what the owner said is, is uh, that they were going to do this down the road, but down the road, you know, got there before, before yep. they, they, they got there. Um, we include in this story that, um, that this is, a, according to a survey from, from Yelp, uh, nearly 66,000 small businesses have folded uh, since March 66,000. 66,000 have, have folded since... This is nationwide. Yeah, nationwide. Um, and that um, from June 15 to June 29th, uh, businesses were closing permanently at a higher rate than the previous three months. So um, the, the bottom line and the reason that we do a story like this, because I, I, I count this as, a, as an inspirational story, I count this as a, a, a lesson, uh, lessons from, from the from the, uh, you know, from the front kind of story is, you know, businesses need to, to look at what they're doing. They need to be agile and flexible. Possibly uh, reinvent themselves. They need to reinvent themselves. They need to, to you know, um, if you can't think outside the box or, in this case, think outside the, the, the glass, um, you know, then, then you, you, you know, you, you're going to, you're going to perish or, or you're just, you're not going to, um, you, you have to, you have to, um, you know, put on your, your thinking cap at a time like this. And, and, and I think that, that for small businesses, um, I think the, the most dangerous thing a small business can be thinking is, you know, it's all going to be all right. It's all going to go back to normal. We just need another week or or, or a month. I, I would say 
that's probably faulty thinking that this is the most major reset we've probably will have yeah. we've ever known in, in many of our lifetimes and um, it's going to be the, the people who are, are thinking on their feet I think that have the greatest chance of survival you know the Ameri- uh, the American Dream Mall I heard is something like three months behind on their mortgage have you heard that well the Palisades Center is what is what four months behind on its mortgage okay Am I, you know, am I right in this statistic about the American Dream Mall, though? I mean, I'm, I know that's slightly uh, yeah, out of your that, domain. That, that, that was out last week, and, yeah. and that is true. You know, the thing about the malls are um, it's kind of like, you know, what we saw with the banks in, in 2008, where they seem to, the, institutionally, it's perceived that those malls are too big to fail. At least that's the thinking right now, and, and what we're seeing and what we're seeing with the Palisade Center, which is more relevant to us, is that the banks are giving them a really long leash to eventually come up with, with their mortgage payments and to refinance and, and to, you know, to, the sort of thing that I, I, I think, don't think homeowners would, you know, that would have that luxury. Um, but so, so will the malls ultimately fail? Um, I, I don't know. I think the jury's out on that one. You know, the Palisade Center was certainly watching what's going on there. But small businesses don't have that kind of uh, leverage. They don't have that kind of power. Um, And you know what? It's really a shame because small businesses are the backbone of the American economy. And if if they were treated, you know, in the same way that that bigger industries are treated, I think we'd be in a better place right now. So we see, we will see, we will watch. You know, uh, again, shout out to two villains for... Um, for being clever and, and agile and smart and, and, and kind of showing the way, you know, giving, making an example. And if anybody wants to read that story, um, all the detail is, is, is in the Rockland story. County Business Journal. You, go, you just go to rcbiz, I spell B-I-Z, journal.com, and it's right there. You got it. All right, Tina, thanks a lot. Talk to you next week.